Disclaimer, just because we do it doesn't mean you should. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Welcome back to Jeff and Adam build a Zenith. This shiny thing right here is the Zenith 750 Cruiser that my dad and I are building. And this shiny thing right here is the UL Power 350 IS engine that we're going to be uh, using to fly this thing through the air. Now, what I wanna do in this video is just kinda introduce you to this engine. And this is just gonna be kind of a, I don't know, general overview. We're not gonna get too technical about things, but if you're anything like me, um, if, you're, if you're not like an engine guy, you know, where you just are used to seeing all these different shiny parts, it just looks like a bunch of different shiny parts all globbed together and you might be like, what is this? And just trying to, you know, kind of, you might just be kind of confused and not even sure where to start. So the idea with this video is to just kind of give you an overview of the engine and get a little bit acquainted. So UL Power um, has an installation manual for this engine, which is quite helpful. It's a little bit hard to read because it's translated from German or something, uh, but it's, it's pretty good. So it'll give you a pretty good overview. So you might want to go through this installation manual as I'm talking about this, or, or, or this, this video would probably be a, a good addition to the installation manual to give you kind of an idea of uh, kind of where the things actually are um, in real life. And maybe I'll talk about some things that aren't mentioned in here. So yeah, and you know, just like with all the other videos, don't take this as gospel truth and uh, you know, use this information at your own risk, et cetera, et cetera. Let's begin. So first of all, uh, it's a four cylinder engine. It is, uh, well, it's horizontally opposed and it is direct drive. So there's no gearbox. You have the, the, uh, the propeller hub right here, the shaft thingy, and you can actually see that I'm spinning this, spinning the flywheel in the back. So up top here, we have this, this dark gray thing. This is going to be uh, your intake air. So it's gonna come through this red air filter right here. Uh, Cause that's the thing I didn't realize at first that the air filter was back here. I thought, you know, on a normal, uh, or a traditional uh, aviation engine, it's usually on the front because you have a carburetor. This does not have a carburetor. So you got your uh, air filter, uh, you got your throttle right here. It's a little, little spring-loaded deal right here. That looks like a lot of fun. And then, and this is your like throttle stop right there. Those where you can adjust with those two screws. And then we've got your, your, uh, your intake air uh, through here goes to all four cylinders. And then um, this sensor right here is going to be your uh, air uh, temperature sensor here. So this right here is your fuel inlet. So your fuel comes in right through here. And then it's going to go uh, to these injectors, one for each cylinder. And then you, this guy right here is your fuel pressure sensor. And then it's going to come across through this braided line and it's going to go to the other side and then you've got your injectors here. And then it comes out this red, uh, where this red uh, elbow is right there. And it comes out this braided line, and then you got a check valve, and so this is your return line. So um, honestly, I'm not exactly 100% sure on how we're gonna run all the fuel lines yet, but uh, the idea with this is it's a continuous flow. So. Um, when you have the fuel pumps going, because you do need uh, at least one fuel pump, we're going to have two um, for uh, redundancy. When you have the fuel pump going, it just flows through here. So it pumps it, pumps it through here, and any excess fuel, which there's actually like a lot, quite a bit of fuel that flows through here, comes through here, and then it has to go back to the tank. So if you uh, blocked this or something or shut this off, that would be bad because then you'd have all this excess pressure here. So don't do that. Here we have the starter motor right here, or the, yeah, the little starter, which uh, you know contacts these uh, the teeth in the uh, the flywheel here, and then that spins that, which spins the the you know crankshaft, which causes everything to move, and then actually built into the the um, into the like the flywheel 
kind of assembly. Back there is your alternator. You can kind of see those coils a little bit. And that's going to give you your electricity. And it comes out as these three wires, which go to a, uh, a rectifier regulator thingy, which I think we'll take a look at later. But right now, they're just wires like that. I need to put connectors on here and route all this stuff. Um, let's see, right here is your uh, oil, uh, your air, oil air breather, it's, it's for your engine breather, your oil air separator breather thing. Can't think of the wording right now, but basically this is how your engine breathes. It's going to go up to a little air oil separator and then any oil that manages to get over there is going to flow back down, back to your oil sump through this little tube right here. And this, speaking of the oil sump, is the oil sump on the bottom. It doesn't take much. It holds like four quarts or something. It's pretty small. I'll just give you a look at that right there. Because I know a lot of this stuff might just, it might just be helpful for me to just, you know, show you with the camera and even if I don't really know what it is. Speaking of things that I'm not sure what they are at the moment, there's this little line which connects to here and I haven't figured out what that is yet or why it matters, but I'm sure it does, and I'm sure I will, but it connects to there somehow. It seems like something having to do with fuel or something, because that's a, like a banjo fitting. I don't know, I'm not sure, not exactly sure what that does. I'll figure it out eventually. And then here you have your oil uh, dipstick. We don't have any oil in here right now, but that's where it is, and so we'll need to cut out a spot for that when we put, try and put the cowling on here. Over here on this side, you've got your position sensors, so your uh, tachometer uh, and crankshaft position uh, sensors. And then here we have the oil temperature sensor and then the oil pressure sensor right down in there. And then I, I believe these little guys are just little oil lines to keep everything lubricated up here. And then you've got your, your little uh, uh, you little push push rod push rod tubes right there on both sides. It's really it's a pretty darn small little engine, but pretty powerful, pretty darn powerful for what it is, especially for the for the weight. Right here we have the um, this part actually comes like separate. So this this little it's called a sandwich plate for the oil filter. What this or well oil cooler I guess. So really what you do is. This is where the oil uh, filter goes, as you can see in like stock, you know, photos of this thing. So you bolt this onto the case using this um, screw thingy, and then you screw your oil filter onto here. So your oil filter is going to be sealed over this part, and then you're, we're going to have our oil cooler. And the lines are going to come out right here because this is actually like a little thermostat, um, and so the oil cooler lines are going to come right out here, hook up to the oil cooler, and the oil cooler is going to sit right here. Um, I don't have the right oil cooler right now because it, it, it would mount onto this, these uh, two brackets right here. And these are actually, these don't come with the engine either. These come from Zenith um, when you buy the firewall forward kit. And uh, we will talk about that in a moment. And then, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure what that is either. Um, so it probably doesn't matter. And then right back here behind this uh, oil filter adapter plate, this is where the sensor would go for the oil pressure uh, if you were using like uh, traditional gauges. Uh, so if you weren't going to be using the, the oil pressure from the ECU. And then right here is where you get your oil temperature if you were using traditional gauges. So you'd have to have those separate... Um, separate sensors for those two um, items and then they would install right there and then of course you have your uh, exhaust pipes on all you know one on each cylinder there and then they're going to collect to a muffler right here and then the muffler is going to have a final exhaust port exhaust tube right there and of course we have spark plugs two spark plugs for each cylinder right there, that's where you hook up your uh, your spark plug lead thingies. 
Let's talk about sensors for a second, because this is kind of really important. And uh, one of the things that I'm just like, why UL Power? Why would you do this? Well,